We are, Jamie, but we're really having to park far away because for some reason where he is lying is Gremlin Central. I can't seem to get a reception anywhere near where he is. So we're a little bit far away, but it's better than no leopard and no signal whatsoever. So we're on Sandy Patch. He is slowly moving in a sort of south easterly direction and there is a drag mark for a kill here so i think maybe what's happened is that he's gone to go and feed and then well he fed and then he went to go and drink around sydney's the problem is there looks like lots of tracks for hyenas so i don't know if he still got the carcass or if it was stolen from him but whatever the case may be he's had a really good meal he's got a nice big fat full tummy and so that's at least a good thing even if the hyenas have stolen it he's still looking absolutely impeccable and he was walking through the golden grass just now when we unfortunately lost signal and it was just the most beautiful scene as he did it no don't get up and move oh no <laughs> we've been trying for so long <laughs> to get a s view of him and now that he's moving it's going to be a problem because if he moves too far i'm not going to be able to keep up with him and the other problem is is that it's just us here so there's three other vehicles that are wanting to come in this direction so i can't really just leave him on his own and wait lose it so hopefully he's going to decide to sit somewhere in that shade it is a warm morning so oh no does not look good he looks like he's striding off no there we go ah thank goodness for that i thought for a second there he was going to start walking far away and we would have had to have had a problem to try and keep up with him with the signal issues but at least he's visible and it's better than no leopard like i say and better than no signal where we are at the moment and you can see it's him just well one because of his face he's got that typical face with his looking a little old and his eyes sag a little bit but he's got also those tatty ears which he's the only male in this particular section that has ears as tatty as that and now he's going to lie down flat and you can see how well they camouflage if you look at that from here it is almost impossible to see that cat we can see him nicely because we are zoomed in but that's what you would be looking at if you drove past it would be very difficult to see him in fact even now when i look i can't make out in Vula at all it just looks like part of the road that you're seeing there so it just shows you how easy it is to miss these guys and drive past them the interesting thing though is that he's been quite active this morning in terms of he's been down he sleeps for a few minutes then up and walking and he's following that drag mark so we found exactly where he's lying is pretty much where it was dragged over the road so whether it's him or the hyenas that dragged it he seems to be following that which is good news for us because it's heading deeper into Vuyatela and not towards Buffel's Hook so hopefully Mvula is going to spend the morning with us on this side and at least like I say we've got some semblance of a view it's not the best view but it's better than no view and I believe he's been spending a lot of time in the western sector so he's been a lot around Arethusa and Simambili and he's been robbing a lot of the young females of their kills as well as being on some of his kills himself I know he stole a bushbuck from the Ingrid Dam young female and he also I think stole an Impala from Nchila as well at some point now the guys are going in the wrong direction Herb, you say, yes, cool, this is your favorite leopard. Well, I think he's a firm favorite of a lot of different people. It's a leopard that has been around for quite some time. He's got the most beautiful eyes, and he's really gained quite a big following over the years. Just remember also, he was the kind of romantic partner of Karula for a number of years, which means that we learnt a lot about him and we saw a lot of him in this particular section and, and lately he's almost this resurgence as he's come back into fruition we had a time where we hardly saw him it was a, about a year that he just disappeared completely into Buffel's Hook and into other areas and then all of a sudden now he's just made an appearance again in the last I would say six seven months we've been seeing really regular sightings of Mvula and it's a wonderful thing because he does have the most magical eyes those colors are incredible it's very different to a lot of the other leopards we see out here and there's just something about him and and for me there's a whole history that comes with him and I've spent a lot of time around this leopard as well as the fact that I know his mother spent time with her and so it's kind of a whole lineage that I've followed and uh, he is really a wonderful individual and I also like him because he seems to get up to all kinds of interesting behavior we see him on the most random of carcasses I found him on porcupines many times we know he was on a porcupine here at some stage this year and he goes on to odd fox and various other small little animals that are around as well as the big stuff I remember when he was in his heyday around sort of 2011 2012 
often used to find him on on fairly big female kudu, big water buck. I think one day I remember him having a male waterbuck, a fully grown male waterbuck, which how he brought that down, I'll never know. A waterbuck is a solid set, powerful animal, but he managed to do it. So he's a bit of a legend in this area, and he's, like I say, making a resurgence back to a viewable leopard. Buttons, you say the stories he could tell us exactly. Um, imagine what he's seen in his... 12 and a bit years of existence he's traveled a long way remember he was born down in the south of the reserve along the sabi river and slowly but surely he forged his way northwards and he's a he's a leopard that has had a, in his prime a massive territory i remember it stretching from mala mala all the way into manuleti so he was really used to walk around quite a bit and he must have seen some crazy stuff he's seen females come and go males come and go male lions come and go female lions come and go and he's really done incredibly well to have survived as well as he has particularly now that he's gotten a bit older in a predator rich area as well as a male rich area so you must remember that at the moment he's competing with anderson tingana quarantine a couple of the unknown males in manuleti buffles hook there's also you know a lot of the young upstarts that are starting to come through as well so it's not an easy place for a male leopard to be he's kind of sandwiched in amongst all of that and to have survived and to be as healthy as he is now at the age that he is is wonderful and i was looking at his teeth the other day his teeth are absolutely superb condition bar the one that's broken but the other three the the canines are long still they're not worn or stubby in any way they're a little bit yellow but they're not in any way sort of not useful anymore he's definitely still got a i would say a couple years left in him as long as he can stay out of the way of the big boys and he can still find food like this I reckon he'll still be around for a little bit longer, which is fantastic because, like I say, he's one of my favorites in terms of just the history that he's got. And and he's a survivor at the end of the day. To be nomadic for the last sort of two years and still be in as good condition as he is is a wonderful testament to his survival instincts and the way that he's able to move around. And you'll find he doesn't scent mark, he doesn't vocalize. He's learned very quickly that if he just takes it easy and he moves around stealthily that he doesn't bring attention to himself then it's quite fine he doesn't actually have to worry as much as soon as he if he started to vocalize and scent mark then you'd have a lot more problems and you'd find tingana and the likes would start to come after him Will, are you wanting to know of any of the more sort of famous leopards and lions that we see in this area? Are any of them GPS chipped or tracking or anything like that? Or is it just based on sightings and us using our skills of tracking and actually finding them, you know, like that? Um, well, so not one of them is GPS. Um, the only way that you can track an animal via a gps is through a collar there is no such thing as a chip that goes into an animal that then sends a signal to a gps it just doesn't work that way you need a battery pack and so the collar is the only way that you can pinpoint a location via sort of gps so you can't put a chip into these animals it doesn't work that way the chips that you put into pets are only identification chips you can't monitor where your pet has moved through one of those little microchips it doesn't work that way at all so all of these animals are found either by luck in terms of just driving and there's a leopard in front of you or by skill where the trackers get off and they track and they follow his footprints and find him that way so it would be a whole lot more boring for me personally if we could just track these animals i some days i wish we could because some days it's quiet and it's tough but there is so much in being able to find footprints follow those footprints find the animal using a bit of your own skill and not just a bit of technology and there's also there's that element of you driving around and you just never know you never know who's around what's around and that that, that thrill of being able to find these different animals and the unexpected around corners and to be able to see different animals in different locations that's just what is what it's all about for me i don't think i could ever work in a place where i would have to track the animals using telemetry or a gps every single day it just wouldn't work i wouldn't be a happy person i don't think it, it would come across a lot more convoluted and, and a lot more sort of con not convoluted contrived is probably the better word for it i don't think it's a, it's a way that safari should be done 
it's it's there's definitely a place for it in terms of research and in terms of um, people that are monitoring certain species that are difficult to follow but for what we do and the way that we do things I think there's so much more in being able to just not know what's around the next corner and being able to use a bit of skill to find animals and rely on a bit of luck than it is to just whip out a telemetry kit and drive to that animal every single day I don't think there's as much fun in that at all